He's so amazing. He blows my mind all the time. He's a mind blower. I thought he was a mind blower, but God. <laughs> <laughs> But when God blows your mind, your mind has been blown. <laughs> Bless the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you. We praise you for this word, God. We just pray that you would just go and have your way, God. <clears throat> we know your people <clears throat> are here this morning, and they didn't come for no foolishness. God, they want to hear a word from you. So this vessel is ready. Just use me, God. Go on and speak through me. And you have your way, God. Don't let anything that I feel or want to say come out, God. But let it be you. <clears throat> you know what every person needs individually, God. You know every situation in our lives. And so we pray, Father, that you would just go on and have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Amen. Galatians 6, 7 through 9 was read in your hearing, and I want to read it again. <clears throat> and it reads, um, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. <clears throat> and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. <clears throat> Title of the message today is, Hold On, This Is Not The Time To Faint. Hold on, this is not the time to faint. Somebody's been wanting to give up. I'm here to let you know you come too far from where you started from to give up now. You can't give up. You can't give up now. <clears throat> Hold on. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to faint. So we're going to look at three things from this passage of scripture. Number one, you reap what you sow. Number two, the weary sower. And number three, the joyous reaper. <clears throat> you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. How many of us know you, you reap what you sow? <clears throat> Some of us don't want to know that. My mama used to tell me that all the time, and I'm like, what are you talking about? You, 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 you're going to reap what you sow. You better be careful out there. You, you reap what you sow. See? And the scripture says, um, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to his flesh. The seed sown is a man's actions here on earth. If the object of those, of those actions is merely self-indulgence, they are, as it were, sown in a field, the owner, uh, in a field, the owner of which is the flesh. So the flesh alone benefits by them. And for it alone are they garnered up. Shall of the flesh reap corruption? If such has been a man's conduct, he must look to the flesh for his reward. Wow. So what, I'm, what am I saying here? <clears throat> if you're reaping, if, you, if you're sowing to your flesh, which is what I, what, what I mean by that is you're always worrying about you and your family and your things and all of what you want in life. <clears throat> and you don't think about anything else. It's just me, 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 and mine, mine, mine. And you sow to your flesh. Everything that your flesh says, your flesh says, I want this, I want that. 
and you can't be content, you can't be happy until you have that because that's what you want and you want to get everything on earth that you see. Every time you see something, if somebody, one, one person has this, you want that. Somebody else has that, you want that. You're never satisfied because you want everything for you, for yourself, your flesh. So you got to please your flesh. If it's, even sometimes if it's your, 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 uh, your, your, your life where, you know, maybe you have, you have, well, no, I'm not even going to go there. I was going to say that. But anyway, I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, even if you are in life and you're just living life daily, you're living life daily and things are going on and, you know, instead of you thinking about God, you're so much thinking about yourself that, you know, God is saying, well, then you're going to get that. That's what you will get. He said, if you want this and you, you're going to go all over the place to get that and you're not thinking about me, you're not thinking about the things of God, then guess what? Then you need to look to your flesh for your reward. Is that, is, is that the way the word goes? And so when you look, when you, when you, when you, when you think about it, you know, it, the, script, the scripture lets us know that the flesh perishes, and, and so, so shall the fruit of all the actions of the flesh. Everything perishes. Your flesh, this flesh won't be with us uh, forever. We, we, when we die, when we leave this place, guess where this flesh is going? This, this flesh is going to go back to the dust, <laughs> back to the earth, okay? And so we're so busy worried about what the flesh is saying to us. Don't you know how, anybody know that your flesh can talk to you? <laughs> Your flesh will talk to you, and when your flesh starts talking, you got to know how to tell your flesh, flesh, be quiet. Right. Come on now. You don't, because if you follow your flesh, if you want to run around following what your, your flesh can lead you into some places. And if anybody can remember their, their B.C. days, before Christ days, and I can remember when, when, when you know, before I got saved, and start really studying the word and trying to understand God's word and digging in, digging in his word and stuff. Before I got saved, you know, and now that I think back on it, on my life, I realized what the enemy was doing with me and with my life. And I was so busy trying to please my flesh, I got myself in so much trouble out there. I was pleasing the flesh because whatever the flesh said, I did. Oh, really? You said you want what? All right, let's go. <laughs> and I was running around like an idiot out there in the world and I just allowed the, the, the enemy to just use me and use me up, right? And so you sow into your flesh and so guess what? Then that's where you reap your reward. And everything, you know, from, the, from, from that point on, you know, the Bible lets us know that um, if we sow to the flesh, we, we, we sow to death. Because guess what? what's going to happen? You know, everything dies. You know, the flesh dies, and we have nothing else to look forward to. And so we got to be careful about sowing to the flesh. Amen. And so then the scripture says, um, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Hallelujah. We'll reap life everlasting if we sow to the spirit. And so... It says, and he that, he that soaked to the spirit, on the other hand, where all the actions are like seed deposited in the field of which the owner and Lord of the spirit, um, that same spirit will reward them in the world to come with get, the gift of everlasting life. That same spirit. So when we sow to the spirit, we've got to understand that the God that we serve, is a God, God is a spirit. And so he does things in the spirit realm that we don't understand. We don't know how God works. But God does things in the spirit realm. Let me tell you, when uh, on Thursday night the kids were, were here and the, the little babies, uh, Kathy, Kathy Talmadge had the little babies, and they were there and they, they, they uh, were, she had a, a plant and she had some dirt. She bought some dirt and everything, and they must have planted a seed in the dirt. And they were over there having fun. But it, there was one particular kid who came, and he was crying before he um, came in. And he really didn't want to go over there. But then when he saw what they were doing, you know, they, you know, they kind of coached him over. And he went over and sat down with him. And he got finished. When he got finished and it was over, he was so willing and ready to come tell me what he had done and what, what he was carrying. I was like, oh, what is that? What do you have? Oh, that's so cute. He said, oh, it's, it's a plant. He said, and um, in two weeks, 
in two weeks, because Kathy must have told him, in two weeks you're going to see something happen with this plant. You're going to see something. And so can you imagine the baby every morning waking up and looking at that plant and saying, oh, mommy, is it two weeks yet? And so he's learning some valuable things in life that, that, you know, lets us see that, listen, God is working under the soil. And even though we don't see God working, he's working. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And let me, oh, my God. And so, so we got to understand that. So when God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God is not, he's, he's not going to tell you no lie. He, he's saying to you, I know what I'm doing. I got this thing. And if you, if you sow to the Spirit, you'll see that this is the law of the Spirit. This is the way I do things. And if you understand the law of the Spirit, you know that one thing works for the other. If you sow to the Spirit, then things will happen for you the way God said that they would happen. And so God is saying, you know, in his word, that the spirit, um, shall, if you sow to the spirit, you shall, the spirit shall, of the spirit, reap life everlasting. And so what you sow to the spirit is never going to die. It's going to be life everlasting. It's like giving, um, you know, putting, putting your treasures, like the scripture says, you know, putting your treasures in heavenly places because you know that one day you, we're not going to be here, but our spirit will be in heaven. And guess what? We done put all these treasures in heaven. And guess what else? We're pleasing God while we're here on earth because God, Jesus already told us that he would give us life and he would give us more life more abundantly right here on earth. And so when we sow in the spirit, we begin to see like that baby could see that, you know, we're going to wait on God and see what he says. But somebody wants to give up. You know why you want to give up? You want to give up because you haven't understood the law of the spirit. And see, with the law of the Spirit, you can't see God working. You don't know what he's doing. You don't know how he's going to do it or when he's going to do it. But you have to stand on the word because the word told us. And God promised us some things. And if he promised it to you, you're going to wait like that baby waited because Pat Kathy promised him. She said to him, in two weeks, you're going to see something. You're going to see something budding out of that plant. You're going to see something because you planted that seed. How many of us are planting seeds in, 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 in the kingdom of God? Well, what do you see that you see? That's what one thing that we have to realize. We have to think about that. Are you sowing to the flesh or are you sowing to the spirit? Are you sowing it? Things in the spirit of God to, so that God can get glory out of your life? Or are you sowing to your flesh? It's everything about you. Everything about your life. And so are you just thinking about things and uh, wanting uh, so many things and all that? And you're trying to get them yourself because, see, um, a lot of us have started to sow things in the spirit. And because, you know, we only waited for like a week. And we didn't wait two weeks. We waited for a week and we kept going back every day. We're like, oh, man, this stuff don't work. How many of us have ever been there? Amen. This stuff don't work. You've been there? I, I know that's right. You know, because you feel like, God, what, when is my turn? When is my time? I'm tired, God. I'm, you know, I'm sick. I'm tired. I've been trying. I've been doing what you told me to do. I've been trying everything. I just told God. I just, and then you jump off and you start trying it yourself. You start sowing to the flesh again. And then you mess up your timing. And so then you got to wait again. You got to wait again because another two weeks because now, you know, you done messed up. You done jumped off instead of you waiting to see what God was doing. In the spirit. And so we got weary sowers sometimes. How many of us get weary sowing? You get tired. I'm here to tell you, you get, hey, listen, tell the truth. My mother used to say, tell the truth, shame the devil. <laughs> tell the truth, shame the devil. Sometimes we get tired. It's, and you know, doing ministry, <clears throat> even though we might make it look easy, it ain't always easy. And it's especially not always easy when we got to carry the load of someone else's ministry. You know, we got, 
We gotta be here to open up the doors. We gotta be here to close the doors. We gotta be here to do this. We gotta be here to do that. Every time I turn around, I must be at this church every day. Hey, what, what? You know, when we got all these people. And so sometimes the ministry, you know, it can, it can be, it can be taxing. It can be taxing. And so you get weary. You get weary. And so in agriculture, sowing involves preparing the soil and planting the seed. Preparing the soil and planting the seed. Preparing the soil and planting the seed. And we're doing this. In ministry, that's what we do. We prepare the soil and then we plant the seed. We prepare the soil and then we plant the seed. And sometimes that can be taxing. Have you ever been farming? I went, I went one time. And I was a kid, I was a kid, and a lady, older lady from my, my neighborhood, she took me farming. And they had people was out there with their hats on and, you know, all kinds of stuff, and o a lot of older people, because I was just like, I had to be about 10 years old or something. <clears throat> and the sun was just beaming, oh, the sun was, and um, I was out there, ooh, ooh, I was thinking was picking tomatoes or something, and I was like, oh my God, I was 10 years old, and I was out there picking tomatoes. Now, a kid, I, I played in the sun all my life. I just, I was up and down the street, sitting on the steps, all in the sun. But if you out in that field, you ain't felt no heat like that in the field. And I was picking tomatoes in the field. And I said, wow, I wonder what the people used to feel like picking the cotton in the field. This is horrible. This is terrible. This is horrible. And guess what? I got sick. I got so sick, he had to take me home. I said, oh, Lord, I can't do this. I can't do this. And so sometimes you get weary when you're sowing. And when you're sowing, sometimes, you know, when, when, when you're sowing, things get hard. And, and it, gets, it, it gets to a place where you, you feel like you just sometimes want to give up. Anybody ever felt like they wanted to give up? Sometimes stuff gets so hard, you feel like, I just can't. I, I can't. I can't with this. <laughs> I, can't. I just can't with this right now. This is just too much for me. But then, you know, you got the joyous reaper reaping the harvest of what has been sown. Reaping the harvest of what has been sown. The scripture says, those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. The joyous reaper, because see, if you hang in there, if you don't give up, if you don't let go, if you don't faint, if you just hang in there a little longer, it's probably going to be a couple of more days. I mean, you had, you had two weeks, you had two weeks. And listen, don't you turn around at the wrong time, because you have come too far to give up now. you come too far. You're right there. You're at the brink of your blessing. You're there. You have sown. You have put out some things. You have done some things. You have given some great things. You have done. And guess what? God is getting ready to give you back those things that you have deposited in to steal. The scripture says, don't be deceived. Make no mistake about this. God is not mocked. God, he, he, he won't be fooled. Because God is the one who watches over the flock. God is the one who um, is, is God of the harvest. He's the one who uh, gives the increase. Like Paul said, you know, I had planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. It's God who gives the increase. So he's not mocked by um, the sowers. And so when you start to get, look around at other people, instead of being in the race, and when you're in the race, keeping your eyes focused on Jesus and focused on God and what he wants to do, when you start looking around at other people and what other people have and what other people are doing, and you're saying to yourself, oh, I'm so far behind. I don't know if I could, I could do this. I don't know if I could do that. And they got this and they got that. And look at this. And they haven't been doing this. Been, you're looking at everybody else. God is saying, God, I'm not mocked by that. I, I, you can't fool me. I know what, how they got what they got. And, you know, they, they, they went down there. They played some numbers. And they thought they got the money that they got. <laughs> I, they didn't get that from me. God said, I, I'm not mocked. Don't, don't you think? No, no, no. That's the way they got that. They got, oh, how did they get that? 
They robbed the bank. And they went down to the bank and they robbed the bank. <laughs> You're looking at them. You don't even know that they were bank robbers. And they got these wonderful, beautiful homes. And they got all this nice stuff and everything. They drive in beautiful cars and they got all this stuff. Nice clothes. And you looking at them. You know, you're supposed to be in the race, stay focused on God, and you and you looking around like, well, doggone it. I done, I, I've been sewing all this time. <laughs> and look at them. They got all this. And God's saying, they're sowing to the flesh. They've been sowing to the flesh. And he says, I'm not mocked. I know. I see what I see. I'm not fooled by that. And so we can't fool God. God is the one who watches over the crop. And so when 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 we begin to reap we're going to reap in joy. You know why we're going to reap in joy? Because we've been sowing in the right field. And because we've been sowing in the right field, God's going to give us exactly what we need and when we need it. Oh, he ain't going to leave us out. And so some of us are feeling like, God, I want to give up. God is saying to you, don't you give up. Don't you give in. I'm, I'm here. I'm getting ready to show you that I'm working this thing out for you. This, I'm working it out. I'm working under the soil, you see, in two weeks. Amen. Give me a couple more days. And something is, is going to start to bud. Go ahead. It, you, you're going you're gonna to look around. You're going to say, get up one morning. You're going to look around. You're going to say, oh, 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 look at there. Wow, that's so beautiful. Look at there. And then the next day, the next week, you wake up, and all of a sudden, that thing going to start growing and growing and growing. And before you know it, you know, you're just going to be giving God all the glory and all the praise because God, he is not a man that he should lie to you. He won't lie to you. And the scripture also says, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow generously, you reap generously so the sowing and reaping if you if you're sowing in the spirit i'm t i'm here to tell you god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and so how do i sow in the spirit i do the things of god god has already had jesus the spirit of god in, in our hearts already he's there if we begin to listen to him and ask him what is it that you want me to do today how is it that you want me to do this you know, just talk to him. God, you know, what is it that, what is, because, you know, some people might be saying, what is she talking about? You know, um, walk in the spirit or sow in the spirit. What are you talking about? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Because you have a spirit and you have your flesh. And your flesh is talking to you. Your flesh is your soul, is the soul with your mind. And your, and your mind, is your flesh is talking to you and telling you some stuff. Your flesh ain't saved. It ain't saved. You got to save it. You got to get it saved. You got to talk to it. You got to get it. You got to put the word in it. You got to change the scriptures. Who, somebody mentioned it earlier today. You know, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to renew the mind. And, uh, are you right? Am I right? And so if you, if, you, if you don't ever renew your mind, your soul, your flesh, if you never renew it, then it's going to always talk to you and tell you the wrong thing and you keep listening to your flesh and your flesh is going to keep saying yeah come on but don't even think about what your, what, this, what your spirit is saying you know because your flesh is so strong he's so strong but when you start putting that word in there and you start telling your flesh flesh shut up I got to put some word on you because you sure because for before I got saved I was like 24 years old when I got saved so for 24 years I had been listening to my flesh my flesh was so strong, it was so strong, and I was like, I, could, I, I couldn't fight the flesh. But then when I started putting that word on it, and the Spirit of God started moving on that thing, right? And the Spirit, of the, and you know, because I, I didn't have any control over it, but God did. And I had to wait for God to begin to remove some things, to move some things, and shake some things up, and to, you know, change some things in my life. And some days I would wake up and be like, wow. You know, sometimes you can get in a situation with somebody and you remember how you used to respond. Oh, I don't, oh, I, what happened to me? <laughs> I didn't respond like I used to respond. That's because you talk to your flesh and you got your flesh in order. You got, you lined the flesh up with the spirit and you, you got to a place where you said, flesh, you ain't going to take over today. No, you're not. You're not taking over today. And so that's what we got to understand that, you know, we, we have a flesh, but our flesh you know, it's only going to take over if you let it. And so we walk in the Spirit. So when we walk in the Spirit, the Spirit, we have power that we don't even realize that we have. That power that we have is the power that God has placed in us. As soon as you say yes to the Lord, 
He said, okay, bam. <laughs> he gave you a power and he put it in your heart. He gave you a spirit that says, you know what, now you can do this. Whatever you've set your mind to do, you can do. And if you just train your flesh, get your flesh in place, get your flesh in order, guess what? I'm going to begin to help you do what you need to do. And I'm going to start working under the soil and things are going to change. Just believe me, things are going to change. I'm not a God that I should lie. And so God is saying, you know, that's the way I work. I work in the spirit realm. Don't, don't be looking for me to work in the flesh. I'm not going to be working in the flesh. That's your job. You got to deal with your flesh. My job is to work in the spirit. So when you decide that you want to work in the spirit and you want to sow in the spirit, then guess what? I'm on it. And the laws of the spirit are going to do what it said, God said it's supposed to do. That's just the way it is. There's no other way. It can't be no other way. So if you've been sowing in the spirit, if you've been doing the things of God, you've been speaking to God, you've been talking to him, asking him questions about this and that, you know, don't you know he will speak back to you? The spirit of the living God lives inside of you. He lives in you. And so you don't even have to sometimes, you know, we say come to church. Yeah, come to church because this is the kind of stuff that you want to get when you get here. But let me tell you something. When you leave this place, you're going to need something. And you're going to be, God is going to put you in positions where you're going to have to make decisions without your pastor. You're going to have to make decisions without the person that you're always calling on. You're going to have to make important decisions. And you're going to need to know some things, hallelujah, that you didn't know. And then when you get out there on the streets and you have to make those decisions, if you have not talked to yourself in your flesh, that flesh is going to take over and do its thing. And you're going to find yourself doing just what the flesh said do. Right? Okay? You're going to do it. You're just going to do it. And God is saying, I work in the spirit. You know, I want you to rest in me. I want you to just, you know, sit back, relax. Rest in me. You, I want you to begin to start doing things my way. my way. Speak to me. Talk to me. I'm here. I'm right here. You carry God with you everywhere you go. Did you know that? Thank you, Lord. He's with you. I don't care where you might find yourself. He is with you wherever you are. And some of us are sitting, sometimes we're in places where we're so afraid of things, and we're like, oh, I'm so scared. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm so scared. And God's saying, well, I'm with you, so what you what? <laughs> I'm God Almighty. I'm, you know, I, I'm the creator of all things. I can do anything but fail. And, you know, that's the God that you serve. And so you don't call on him. You don't say, God, oh, Lord God, help me here. And God said, yeah, now open up your mouth and speak against it. Whatever it is. What's the situation? I speak against that by the blood of Jesus. The, the devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, I cancel your assignment. That Satan, you better back up in the name of Jesus. And you start talking all of a sudden. I'm here to tell you, try it. Try it. I want you to know that it's real. It's true. You start speaking that stuff out there, and all of a sudden the whole atmosphere will change for you. Be, this is in the name of Jesus. The blood of, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. And sometimes, you know, you'll find yourself getting to a place where you'll be like, oh, you know how you used to be back in the day. You know, you'd be like, ain't nobody coming up here trying to, you know, jump on me. But when you get in the spirit, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you know you ain't going to fight with your, spirit, with your, with your fist. But guess what you want to fight with? Oh my God, you're going to cut him with that word. And, you <laughs> and sometimes, I mean, I get, I'll be in my house, I'll be warring like a mug. Boy, I'll be like, in the name of Jesus, I'll be dog on. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is a shit. And you, yes, I do. You know why? Because the enemy thinks that he, he still has control. He doesn't still have control over us. Anymore, once you get saved, he has, he, has, he has freed you. You are free from his grip. And we're still walking around like that elephant, still, still, you know, holding, thinking that we're chained to that, to that pole. 
and they took the took the took the loose the noose off the pole, and the elephant still walking around. He he won't even go out and venture out for life and see what life is all about because that's all he knows is that he, for 24 years he walked around that pole, and somebody one day came and loosed him from that pole, and when he loosed him, they said, "Go elephant, go go, enjoy life, live life." Every time somebody come back looking at the elephant, the elephant's still in the same place, going the same direction, same, doing the same old thing. How many of us are still doing the same old thing? You know what I'm saying? Because the enemy has you thinking that you are not free. You're free. You're free to go about the country. <laughs> See the sights. It's a new country that we live in, y'all. We live in. We are living in the. In, well, we're living in the kingdom of God. <laughs> and it's all this new stuff to see. All this new stuff to see. God, whoa! Look at you, God. Look at what you have done here on earth. What? God, I mean, how many of us have ever, think of, when you think about it, you ain't seen certain, some things in the Word of God until after you got saved. You looked at that thing again, you said, oh, shut what that means? <laughs> why? I never saw that. You know why you never saw it? Because you've got a spirit mind now. You know, you've got the mind of Christ and seeing things, you know, like you never saw things before. And God's saying, go about the country. I got some things in this kingdom that I want you to see, things that you ain't never seen before. Been right in front of your face. You've been walking past it. You know, stuff I got for you, gifts I got for you, things I want for you, to, to, for your life, all this good stuff in this kingdom, and, and you've been missing out on it. You've been missing out. And God says, no, you, you're going to be a reaper of joy. You're going to be a reaper of joy. I want somebody to know today. I don't want, I don't want you to leave here feeling, you know, like you're a, a, a sower, a, 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 a weary sower anymore. Because if you sow into the kingdom, God is saying, guess what's going to happen for you? You're going to see that I'm going to begin to work like I've never worked before under the soil. Amen. And if you just keep on sowing, just keep on sowing. And, you know, what do I mean by sowing? I mean sowing, sowing like uh, good things, good, speak good things into people's lives. Amen. You see somebody going through some stuff, say something, help them. You don't be evil, don't be mean. What the scripture say about, about the evil? It says, um, Job said, as I have observed, those who plow evil and those who sow trouble reap it. You run around sowing trouble, you plowing trouble, you tr plowing evil, all you got is evil, evil, evil. You wonder why everybody's evil to you. It's because that's what you're, you're reaping, what you have sown in the earth. That's what you have sown. You have, you are reaping that. So just think about that. If people, everybody's treating you bad and everybody's like, you know, looking at you all cross eyed and talking to you all mean and evil, think about what you've been sowing in earth. What you been sowing? What you been sowing? And so that's what God is saying to us today. He's saying to us, listen, you know, think about it. Come on now, think about it. If you want your life to change, you want things to change for the better, things can change for the better, and you don't have to work so hard to make them change. I'm the one who gives the increase. God is the one. And God is saying, I'm giving you two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. This, this thing, I, you know, you already planted the seed. Now wait for the two weeks. Can you hold on? Can you hold on? Can you, can you just wait, right? Can, can you wait? That's all. And that's the hardest thing for us is waiting. Because the enemy will keep start, he'll start talking to us and telling us this stuff don't work. You see there? You see there? You put all your hope in God. You done put all that stuff and, you know, you done, you done worked your bones off with God, you know, and he ain't showing up for you. This stuff don't work. And I'm here to let you know this stuff does work. 
pick up cuz work. I tried him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and I know he's real. I tried him. And I know he'll do it for you. You got to try him. And God is saying, hold on. Don't you give up. Ain't time to faint yet. Amen. This is not the time to faint. This is not the time to give up. Amen. You're right at the brink of your blessing. Yeah. You're right there. I don't know. Somebody may have another week. Somebody may have another day. Somebody may have another two days. I don't, I don't know how long it is for you, but God is saying, wait, I say on the Lord, wait. Amen. Wait on him. Continue to sow in the spirit because God won't lie to you. He's not going to lie. It's going to come to pass. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. <laughs> Is God all right, y'all? He's a good God. He's an awesome God. And he's teaching us how to live in the spirit realm. He's showing us that he's a God who can do anything but fail. He's teaching us how to go about living this life that, that we have joined up with. We came into the kingdom of God. We are God's kids. We are kings for king's kids. And we're walking around here all sad and feeling low and feeling down and feeling like all hope is lost. And God is saying, you my child. And if you understand the way I do things, I don't do things like you knew I did things or, or the way you did things 24 years and when you walked around for 24 years in your flesh. I don't do things like that. And you still think that that's the way I work. I don't work like that. I work in the spirit realm. And you're going to have to learn how to work in the spirit realm. You're going to have to learn that. And how do we learn it? We learn it by uh, practicing. Anybody ready to practice? I, I, when I, when I, I, oh, somebody said they're ready. So see, I'm going to here to let you know. See, before I, 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 I'm a cosmetologist too, and, and before I was able, was able to graduate, I had to do a practice, practicum, what is it called, practicum? And, and <laughs> I had to practice on somebody's head, and I took my sister and I had to cut her hair. She let me cut her hair off and everything, and I had to practice. Let me tell you something. They wouldn't give me my license until I, 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 I practiced. They, they, I had to prove it to them that I knew what I was doing. I had to prove it to them that I knew how to do color. I had to, I had to prove it to them. And God is saying, prove me. He's saying, prove me. So you know, he's saying, sow in the spirit, sow in the spirit. Do the things of God. Get God's word in you. Talk to your flesh. Tell your flesh no. Get, get in there. Get that word because, you know, you, you, you'll be fighting with your flesh. And God is saying, you ain't got to fight with your flesh. Just put the word on it. Put the word on it. And the word is powerful. It's sharpened in any two-edged sword. It'll cut. It'll divide. It'll do everything that needs to do. Understand if you can trust in God's word to do what it says he said that it will do. So if you trust in his word, then God will do what he said he's going to do in the word. And you can relax and stop worrying about, I can't stop. I'm trying to stop smoking. I can't stop. God is saying, no, you know, go on. Finish your smoking because you ain't going to smoke for long. If smoking is a sin to you, if smoking is, you know, something that you want to stop, when God is saying, you ain't going to smoke, you ain't going to be smoking for long. If you continue to put the word on it, continue to water it, and continue to look for, you know, this thing to happen. Because guess what? In two weeks. <laughs> In two weeks, it's going to happen. Anybody ready to, to practice? Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. And so sometimes, you know, when you, get it, when you practice, you might get it wrong. You know, because it's practice, right? <clears throat> they tell me that uh, that's, that's what the doctors, the doctors, they practice medicine. Sometimes they get it wrong. <laughs> you go home and you got this medicine, it ain't working. And you're like, oh, doctor, you know, I had some medicine when I broke my leg. I, I, I was seeing things. I was, I, I was seeing, 
I was seeing monkeys or something, whatever that was. <laughs> he said that wasn't him. <laughs> that thing, whatever it was, it, I looked up and I was like, okay, what is that? I got my eyes focused and then all of a sudden that thing jumped on me. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm in my bed. I said, call the doctor. <laughs> Something wrong. <laughs> Something wrong with this medicine got me, got me in here hallucinating. <laughs> Sometimes you're going to get it wrong, right? Come on, come on. You're going to get it wrong. But don't worry about that. Try it again. Trust me, I tried the next medicine that they sent to me. They said, all right, we'll try this. And I tried it. I'm here to let you know. If you practice, you get better and better every day, every day. Won't you get better? Yeah, yeah, you'll get better. You'll get better with your skills. You know, I, man, I was doing hair. I was, oh, who, who, you kidding me? I was bad. <laughs> Trying to get back to it, but it's slowly but surely coming back, kind of slowly. But I'm here to tell you, if you practice, it'll work for you. So God is saying, that's all I want from you. That's all I need for you to do. I want you to begin to practice this thing. Because I want to prove to you that I am God. Okay? Because when you know that I am God, then you're going to go tell somebody else, oh, he is God. <laughs> uh, listen, <clears throat> I know it for myself. You can't tell me. I know that he is, and I'm here to tell you how it works. You don't have to walk around here being disappointed and sorrowful and feeling like life is over and you just want to give up. You just want to faint. God is saying you don't have to faint now. Don't you faint because guess what? I know what I'm doing in your life. And if you continue to sow in the spirit, I'm going to continue to work under the, under the, under the soil. And I'm going to work it out for you. Anybody learning anything this morning? I ain't just telling you stuff that I read about. I'm here to tell you I've been practicing for many, many years. And I'm here to let you know that God is not a man that he should lie. He has not lied to me. I will not practice when I practice and I practice and I will get it wrong and go back and practice again and go back and practice again. And then I would get good at some stuff. Then when I got good at it, I was like, well, wait a minute. I got to go show somebody else how to do this. Because I'm, too many of my brothers and sisters are walking around not understanding the power that they have within. And if you understand the power that you have within, then you will know that you don't have to walk around feeling helpless and hopeless and, 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 and defeated. <laughs> He'll do it. He will do it. And it's, 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 like, it's like putting one thing in to get one thing out. It's like, you know, every, every day, you just, and you're going to, it's, he's going to, to give you what he promised you. He's going to give you what, what he promised you, but you've got to get yourself in line. You've got to get in line with God and trust him and know that, you know, he, he's not going to fail you, you know. When you jump out on that limb with him. He ain't going to fail you. He's going to be right there with you. Peter walked out on that water. And when he walked on out, he said, you know, uh, uh, bid me come. He jumped out there and, uh, oh, you know, because he was feeling it, you know, like, oh. And he jumped out on that water. And Jesus, well, Jesus said, come, come on. He said, come on out. And Peter jumped out there and started walking on water. I'm here to let you know God is saying to all of us today, come on out. Come on out. Practice, you know. Peter got it. He 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 was doing it for a minute there, but he fell. He started he started sinking because he he lost his focus. Lost his focus. And God saying, "You're gonna get it wrong sometime, but don't worry about it." See, people don't know. They don't understand your walk. They don't understand. You know, you're living in a new kingdom, in a different kingdom, and you things are done differently here. We need to learn that things are not done the same way they are in the world today. We don't, we don't get our things from the world. We get our things from God. Hallelujah. God gives us the strength.
spirit gives us the spirit and the power that we need. We don't have to fear anything. No, we don't. Our flesh will get afraid in the beginning, <clears throat> you know. My sister was telling me about this family. She was like, oh, yeah, they're bad, they bad, they mean, they, there's a million of them. You need to, oh, my goodness, they are. And at first, my flesh was like, oh, my God, I don't want to come up against them. <laughs> she said, there's a million of them, oh, you know. Oh, I was like, oh, oh, oh. And then the Lord said, oh, please. <laughs> please. The man, <laughs> okay, you get yourself all thankful for it. Talk to your flesh, tell your flesh because my Bible says they're gonna reap what they sow. They're gonna reap what they sow. I'm, I'm gonna pray for them because I don't really want that to happen, but I want them to stop being so mean and evil and bad and killing people in the world. How about that? And so, you gotta pray against that. You know, you pray against that. Don't you, your flesh is going to talk to you for a minute. Your flesh is going to say, "Yeah, I'm scared." But as soon as you find yourself getting to a place where you just overwhelmingly uh, just can't all, can't even hold, almost coming out of the house, then you realize that you don't let it go too far. <laughs> God is saying, as soon as you see it happening, you begin to pray against it. And I'm I'm here to tell y'all, please practice. But I want somebody to come back to me and tell me. You know, what happens when, what, I'm, I'm going to ask you, did you practice? What happened when you practiced? What happened? Because something is going to happen. If you sow some seed, something is going to happen. Something is going to grow. Something is going to grow. God is saying, I need for my people to practice. God planted the seed, his only begotten son, in the earth. His son was there all day Friday. He was there all day Saturday. And he rose to new life early Sunday morning with all power in his hands. Jesus had already said it. He said, I, in three days, he said, he said, I'm going to die, but in three days I'm going to rise again. He had already said it, and I'm here to let you know God has already said it. And God is not a man that he should lie. He's not going to lie because he's already said it in his word. Practice his word. Hold on. This is not the time to faint. Be not weary in well-doing. Because in due season, in your proper timing, See, it's, it's a proper time for this thing to happen for you. It's a, it's, it's, it's a due season. It's a time for this thing to happen. And when that, that time, God is saying, that time has to come. So be not weary in well-doing. Don't get to a place where you start thinking about so much and get, get, feeling so bad. Just know that God is still working under the season, uh, under the seed, under the soil. And if he's working under the soil... He's saying, I want you to learn how to wait on me and don't get weary. Because you shall reap if you faint not. Let us all stand in the house of the Lord.